I remember saying to these guys, you realize that that is like a felony. Like, you know, that's, that's basically rape. <laughs> I'm going to give you some preamble to what the news was in the wrestling world in the lead up to the event of In Your House 3. And for some stupid reason, I'm not even given the date, September something, 95. <laughs> So, a couple of weeks earlier, Tatanka was suspended because of an incident that came to light in late 1994, where a girl claimed she was drugged, sodomized, and had half her head shaved, and was hitting the WWF and individuals oh. with a lawsuit. Do you... I can explain more of this afterwards. Do you remember any of this? Because obviously the actual incident itself was before your time. Yeah, if you'd have asked me that just blank, I wouldn't have remembered the specifics. <clears throat> When you said the head shaving part, then it starts coming back. Uh, yes. But at this time, there was a a culture of that, you know, in the in the business. Uh, GHB, gamma hydroxybutyrate, uh, just out of nowhere started showing up in gyms, you know, for sale. And it was like $12 a bottle. You know, so the guys were buying like six bottles, eight bottles, 10 bottles of it because it was in a very effective fat burner. If you there was a little blue scoop that I'm not kidding you the 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 it was probably about as big as round as my thumbnail or my pinky nail, and probably about that deep. So you're supposed to take one level scoop of this like white crystally powder looking thing and put it in water, sort of and drink it, and go to bed. And while you were sleeping, it would and it worked. I mean, it would burn fat off you. But the boys, in typical fashion, figured that if you didn't go to bed, if you stayed awake. In about 20 minutes, it would go from sitting here talking to you sober to two cases of beer in you. You know what I mean? Just sober to drunk in a span of 60 seconds. And it, 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 I did it one time and it made me nauseous. It, like it's, it's one of the puke. Um, but the boys again figured out, like, hey, if one scoop, scoop's good, what'll three scoops do it if you stay awake? You know, and just all this constant experimenting that the guys had. Um, and then it started being used in more nefarious ways like that. Uh, I had never seen it. I'd heard the stories, you know, like in the dressing room, the guy, like, hey, they won't believe what happened last night. <clears throat> and I remember thinking to myself, there was a night in Portland where we had an afternoon show on a Sunday and then we have the whole day to kill, which was always nice for the wrestlers because you had the whole evening to hang out and get something to eat and do all of that. Well, that night at the building, Jimmy Hart and Earthquake, John Tenta, had mentioned that they were, because the next day we were going to be in uh, South Dakota, that they were going to fly out that night so that they could go tomorrow to visit Mount Rushmore. I'd never been to Mount Rushmore, so, hey, you guys, mind if I jump in with you? And uh, they said, sure, you know, come on. So I ran back to the hotel, got my stuff, and after the show, straight to the airport and flew out. So I'm out Rushmore for the first and only time the next day. Amazing. Um that night, a couple of nameless guys decided to do this and allegedly, from what was being said in the dressing room, did some fairly graphic things with the girls that were unconscious. And I remember saying to these guys, you realize that that is like a felony. Like, you know, that's, that's basically rape. And, uh, and, you know, and the guys were like, oh, come on, no, no. The, the, Please understand, and, and, I, and it's hard for me at times I have to remember, like, oh, I need to explain this. Uh, when we were on the road like that, we were we were in a bubble that got treated differently. Like, oh, that's one of the WWF wrestlers, you know, and, and sort of like you got put on this pedestal so you could do stuff that the average person couldn't do that you'd get arrested for or whatever and get away with it. Or you'd walk into a store, these guys that are making king's ransom and salaries and uh, – say, Hey, I want these shoes for 50 bucks instead of 200 bucks. And they, okay, sure. You know, that kind of thing. And I, I kept hearing these stories, you know, of this stuff being done. And it was <laughs> from my understanding and listening in the dressing room, this was like a fairly common thing that was being done. And I thought to myself, like, guys, I, I ain't going to be around any of that. You know, it's, uh, I mean, that's just a disaster waiting to happen, right? I, you know, when I say we're in that bubble, yeah, but you can't really rape or, you know, uh, uh, what's the word, you know, like uh, doing something to the woman's private parts uh, without her knowledge or, or consent. 
they're not going to be seen too kindly by a jury, right? So uh, I just thought, like, I'm no part of that kind of stuff. You know, and, and I guess in a way people would say, well, yeah, but, you know, you should have pointed it out or called it out. Yeah, that wouldn't have really worked in that system because, again, we live in a bubble, so that outsiders weren't allowed inside of. So it would have been my word against their word. Uh, and I don't even know the women that they supposedly happened to. They're just two women that went to the hotel with these guys. So, you know, you, you just reach a point where you just felt like really almost straightjacketed, like, I don't want to be part of that. And I don't want to just turn a blind cheek to it, you know, blind eye or, uh, you know, cheek to it and, and pretending that this isn't a serious thing. But, you know, like when you're in that, again, in that bubble, and it's the best I can explain it, it doesn't give it a, not, certainly not an excuse, but you're so focused on having a good match, getting this character over. And there's so every day there's an onslaught of stuff that's going on and you can either decide to overflow yourself and overload yourself with this just gluttony of, of information, most of it useless or cut out all that noise and just stay focused on what you're doing. And, you know, for me, the realization at that time was, and still in hindsight is, you know, if, if I was, uh, if I would have gone to Vince and said, Hey Vince, you know, I'm, think this you need to get involved in this most likely he saw so, well this guy's a troublemaker right it, you know, get him out of the dressing room we'll send him home um it uh a very different time uh i can honestly say on my two boys and my mother and father's grave never did that never would have partaken in it certainly wouldn't condone it in the sense of if i were there and seeing this happened uh happening um but I remember thinking like having these discussions with guys, and it wasn't just like that discussion. Another part of that discussion would be how some of the guys were like extraordinarily promiscuous. And, you know, we are talking like just years out of the, like years into this whole AIDS epidemic. And, you know, they, they had all the little sayings back then and stuff, you know, if, if I sleep with you tonight, I've slept with all your partners for the last year or whatever. And I'm like, yeah, I'm not really interested in that. Like I, you know, I, I, my luck is pretty bad with stuff and somebody's going to catch something they shouldn't catch. It'd probably be me. But a lot of these guys would do it without even protection. And thankfully in hindsight, none of them died, you know, or caught something horrific like that, um, <laughs> that I know of. But, uh, yeah, it was just an incredibly, incredibly aberrant time. Like, you know, the, the, the drug usage was so over and so rampant and so everywhere um, that, again, you could, like, wallow in that stuff and let that just over just saturate you. Or, for me, it was like blinders on, and I'm going to focus on what Shane Douglas, or in this case, Dean Douglas later, or 95, or a young, unknown Shane Douglas in 90, what he has to do. Like just to carve my way through this. And to me, like if you're doing something down in your hotel room, that's your responsibility. I, I'm not your dad to come down. Hey, James, you shouldn't or shouldn't be doing that. Uh, mine was, I could take care of me. And, uh, you know, it's, uh, I, I'm surprised that it was only the, the, that one that got identified because there was an awful lot of that kind of stuff. I'm not necessarily just meaning the same exact thing, mm -hmm. but things in that vein, you know, where women were really being, objectified and, and, and totally mistreated. And, uh, I think, you know, I wouldn't call my, well, I, I'll, I'll be careful in the wording, uh, having grown up in a house full of women, my brother was 10 years older and out of the house from, from a very young age. He was 10 years older than me. So uh, I grew up with a, uh, an abiding love for women that, you know, my family, my sisters and my mother, and also a respect for them. Especially my mother, I can see how hard she worked and everything. And the idea that somebody would objectify her in a similar way would incense me. Mm -hmm. So, uh, you know, I, I think I was a little bit ahead of that curve in that respect. But it wasn't something to go into the dressing room and say, hey, everybody got an announcement to make. Shane Douglas thinks, uh, you know, because the fucker, you get the fuck out of here, right? It's, uh, yeah, but it, yeah, bad time, bad time in the industry. Uh, now I wish I'd actually said that uh, said this beforehand, but Tatanka was basically found completely innocent. Apparently, he was just in the wrong place at the wrong time. Uh, mm. The name of the person, the main suspect, we can either say it or not. It's, I think it's already fairly public knowledge who it is. But uh, shall I say the name? Who suspected? I, I would. I, I would personally, be, you know, even though the statute limitations run out on it, 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 that could be taken as a slander 
you know, uh, you know, making the accusation to somebody, even though it's fairly public knowledge, I'd be careful. I'll personally. I'll, I'll leave it out then. But if you if you want to figure it out, Kevin Nash famously threw out this guy's name some years earlier uh, to tank with <laughs> returns of the company early 1996.